What's going on everybody? My name is Rudy and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to be reviewing the HDMI capture card. Um, specifically, a generic capture card that is sold by a company called Yetasi or Yet ASI. Um, in a world where most capture cards, really good ones, cost $150. Um, I was really hunt on the hunt for something that was a little bit cheaper. So um, this one, at the time of when I bought it, and the time of checking this video, is around $30. Full link and this is in the description below. All right, so this next section is gonna be a standard unboxing, but while I go through the unboxing, let's just talk about what an HDMI capture is for the uninitiated. In short, capture cards are used to record the signal from one machine to another, where typically that first machine is going to be a gaming, laptop, a console, anything that's used to just process and uh, output the the signal that is typically sent to your monitor um, or TV, whatever the case may be, to show this what you visually see, and then that's actually captured um, in between via this little guy here that I'm about to show you, which is a HDMI capture card, uh, which then also sends a signal out that can be received by another machine that can take on the burden of recording or streaming such that you reduce the load or burden on either one of those machines from running uh, gaming and recording and streaming all at the same time. So here you see is the, the output in like a micro or USB uh, 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 jack, whatever you call it. And um, here are the cables that come with it. Pretty standard stuff. You get a USB D USB cable as well as a micro USB cable. What it does not come with is an HDMI cable, which you'll have to provide yourself um, separately. So see the configuration of how you would typically set it up. I don't really understand how that phone is able to connect an HDMI cable, but whatever. Uh, you'll see that there's OBS mentioned in this little pamphlet here. It's exactly what I use to record and broadcast and stream. Open source software is always the best. So there you go. That's the unboxing. This is all that you get with it. You do not get an HDMI cable, so make sure that if you do go get this, you have that handy to get your uh, setup going right away which we're gonna jump into right now. So here we have uh, me just plugging in the micro USB, which is a five volt standard uh, power delivery. So what I'm pointing at to that repeatedly on both sides is the HDMI input as well as the HDMI output. Now I'm basically trying to figure this out as this was my first time setting up. The input is going to be the HDMI cable that comes from your source machine. So let's say to make things easy, I've got my gaming machine as the source. So what I need to do is take HDMI cable and connect it to that input that I'm caressing right there. And then, that was weird. I'll probably edit that out, but maybe not because I'm lazy. So, all right. So I flipped over the HMI capture card. I've got the micro USB powering the card as indicated by that red light. I'm going to be taking the HDMI, what am I doing right now? Input, which again is the source. All right, let's let's put it in. Nope. All right. <sighs> this is gonna take a while. Okay, so we're gonna put the HDMI input 
right into that slot and the next thing is to take the output which is typically what gets sent to your monitor or display of choice or if you got a KVM switch the KVM box link to that video below and then once you've got that hooked up the next step is all right let's wait until i got that set up all right that's plugged in into that amos kvm switch making sure and testing through that the pass through actually works so that the um, that the source signal actually goes through the card and into my display so the blue light indicates that it is receiving a signal of source and you can't see it on screen, but I was able to confirm that the source signal is at indeed passing through because I can effectively see the um, my OS. I see Windows 10 displaying on my on my uh, monitor there, which you just can see off screen. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is taking that USB from the capture, plugging it into a USB-C dongle that's now connecting to my MacBook Pro. So effectively my gaming machine is running off Windows 10 and the machine that I'm going to be recording things off is a MacBook Pro. down to the monitor you can see that the signal is indeed passing through the HDMI capture card firing up the MacBook Pro and now comes the software setup which uh, for the most part will include launching OBS and finding the appropriate property source the appropriate uh, source from. Okay, so from here, it's just a matter of launching OBS and then from the video capture device section of OBS, you just have to select the appropriate source. In this case, it will come through as I think USB video, if I'm not mistaken. And so this is just me trying to figure it out all out for the first time. Referencing the dot. And here's me actually just struggling through it all. Not necessarily winning. So it gets a little tricky for the first time. And just wasn't able to get things to show properly the first time and what ended up happening was the uh, USB connector wasn't really solidly connected the first time through so the one thing that I would say is that if you have uh, if you do get this HDMI capture card um, and you have higher quality cables that you can use instead of what it comes packaged with, I'd highly recommend using those instead. Uh, I was able to use a braided cable um, from the USB to USB uh, connector, and that worked much better. Okay, so at this point, I think I figured out, it's just a matter of selecting the right source, as you can see, I was able to pull up the desktop for my Windows 10 right there onto my MacBook Pro, uh, which is um, getting an 
outputting the signal that is coming from the capture card. I'm trying to adjust the canvas to match the resolution that's on my um, uh, Windows 10 machine, but really that's just more of an OBS configuration versus an actual limitation of the, the capture card itself. Even though I do think there is a resolution limitation, actually, um, just double check the specs that uh, come with the capture card as well as on the Amazon page just to make sure that it fits your specific needs. I'm mostly using it just to have fun and test StarCraft, StarCraft streaming, uh, which is also on my channel, so give that a check if you want to see the capture card happen in real time. But otherwise, I do have a quick demo of how that actually looks, so let's see how it is in action. Demo time, here we are playing StarCraft 2. So, um, this clip is a little bit old. I've since been able to uh, adjust the settings and modify it to a place where I'm fairly pleased with it. But as far as my first try through this, it worked very really seamlessly, and I've been pleased with it thus far. Um, the only other thing to note is that the audio actually passes through the HDMI as well. So as you can see, I've got my headphones attached to uh, the monitor. So there is an audio output that comes from a monitor which is taking the signal from HDMI which is passing through HDMI capture card which is also being captured by OBS on that secondary machine. So there you go. All right, so final verdict. Is it worth it at 30 bucks? I would say definitely yes. If it is your first foray into streaming, recording gaming, or just capturing your uh, whatever it is that you want to capture from one device to another, I would highly recommend it. Just make sure that you have that added HDMI cable as well as additional cables, micro USBs, USB to USB cables, in case the standard wiring doesn't just cut it for you. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. It would really help if you subscribe and to leave a comment. Let me know what you think about capture cards in general, or if you found this video helpful. It helps out a lot. Thanks so much, and I will catch you on the next one. Bye, everyone.